Hello there, Blueberry Muffin. Welcoming you back to Crypto's Juiciest News. Look at the Bitcoin price chart, $91,000. It's around 91K-ish here, friends. And this is the this is a 30-minute chart. As you can see, it's doing the flagging part where they just grind up. We like to call it vertical accumulation. I love that, friend. Just the, the memes in crypto, they, they, they just make you laugh. Vertical accumulation. <laughs> now, you want to know what's so funny about vertical accumulation? It's because, friends... Normally, when we talk about accumulation, it's we go up and we come back down and it does like chart like this. That's like what Landwolf 615 looks like, for example, which I'll show you right now. It's kind of funny. It's actually up to, it did a 22% pop, but you see this, friends, look, put on a, on a linear chart, okay, just so you can see. See how like it goes up and like everything looks dead. It like looks dead. Yeah, that part, it's not fun. No one wants to look at that part, okay? It doesn't, no one wants to look at that part, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but now we're making new meme words for crypto. So normally accumulation is meant to be on the bottom, but it's like it's sad. Oh, everyone's depressed. Now they call it vertical accumulation. It basically, what it's basically, it's trying to like, it's trying to coerce everybody to just, just keep buying the hype. <laughs> it's just, I love it. The, the, the psyopsing and the emulation of stuff we do, but it's, it's not even meant to be nefarious. It's this what the crowd wants. It's like, I'm accumulating vertical. It's basically you're trying to like, <laughs> you're trying to convince yourself it's okay for me to buy high because I'm still accumulating. Oh man, I, I love it. This is funny. <clears throat> now what's going on with the rest of crypto, friends? We have, I got some juicy, juicy news. You know, the Bitcoin monthly chart, man, the monthly charts are still looking amazing. Here we are now. And we are above this big channel here, but actually not really. Like if you connect the dots around this zone here, it's, I think it's going to take a while to battle through, but it's good because it's, it's, it's such a big, big macro macro zone. I mean, I can't believe Bitcoin's at $90,000 plus. This is the ETH BTC ratio, okay? It's still like we need it to pretty much just hurry up and get out of this zone. It's going to be a while. Friendly reminder though, uh, non-believers, friends, non-believers are going to get mogged, but Ethereum does its big stuff in the year after the Bitcoin halvening. Okay, so yes, if you're non-believer, you're going to get mogged. It's just about how much of a big move are we looking for? Well, I don't want to, look, assuming it doesn't diminish, look what it did last time. If you go to, here is just as soon as 2021 started, to the top, Ethereum went and did 200% of a move. So maybe we're around here by January, who knows? And what's a 200% move that do? It takes us around 0.2%. 10 on the ETH BTC, which is actually still garbage because it was a 0 0.16 back in June 2017. But hey, if Ethereum starts to do that, it's going to be great for all. But a lot of the attention and the spotlight is now on Soy Lana, friends. Soy Lana, because you have meme coin super season, super season, super cycle, super everything. This is the sole ETH ratio. The vertical line here is when FTX gets all their money to token to distribute on the way um. Uh, they're going to get billions of dollars, by the way, up here. It's, it's, I think it's more like 1.5 billion or something. So this is a sole ETH ratio and everyone's watching it. Um, you don't really need to worry too much about it. It's just that, look, think about this, though. If you're in Soylana, what if Mindshare goes to other chains next year? What then? Um, uh, a lot of people on Soylana just because there's other people there. It's something to think about. What I'm also getting at is, if you're a meme coin, um, what if the cha what if what if Ethereum stuff starts moving next year? Have you considered that? Obviously, no one considered that. They give it. They give it. It's funny. Everyone in Solana has given a literal zero percent probability. Um, if you're in Pulse Chain, though, if Ethereum moves up, good. It's turbo leverage. It's beautiful. Also, something else to think about. When this is Pulse Chain price chart here, friends. When Pulse Chain was moving up this year, we had memes move up already. And Ethereum was still poop. So it seems like, okay, and by the way, I am going to lick this lollipop again. It seems like Pulse Chain altcoins win in both scenarios. If Soylana meme season appears next year, um, sweet, Pulse Chain's got memes too. So that's world one. What about world two? What if the mind share reverts back to Ethereum stuff or other chains? Well, Pulse Chain is going to succeed because Ethereum is starting to move up and slingshot leverage on it. Okay, that's just, that's that's the advantage you have here. Look, can it, can both Ethereum and Soy stuff go up? They can. It's just that you got a lot of jeets, bro. Because when there's so many people who are weak hands on your chain, you are paying a premium price to be there because everybody else is there. 
So do you want to see the world where people start looking at other stuff? It's something to think about, okay? But it's no guarantee, okay? And that's why crypto is inherently risky, man. There's just, you're dealing with network effects. People are interested today, not interested tomorrow, but I'm just helping you outline what's going on. Now, I want to crank out some news. Check this out, friends. Donald Trump is meeting with Coinbase CEO Brian Boldstrong. He's actually meeting with him. We don't know what the meeting is. It's actually an emergency meeting. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going to happen here? Um, I'm just guessing he wants he wants a listing on Coinbase for like his Donald Trump token. Uh, that would be funny if it was. That would be so funny, friends, because, you know, if, if, just the spirit of doing that, like, hey, I'm trying to shield my bags. Oh, that'd be gold, man. That'd be gold. MicroStrategy friends bought another 51,000 Bitcoin. So they're up to, they bought $4.6 billion worth. That's big, man. So if you buy 100,000 Bitcoin, it's around 0.5% of the supply, man, because Michael Saylor owns like one and a half. It's almost owning like one and a half percent now. That, that's huge. Big, big, big dollars. And remember, they have an infinite money glitch. So they have stocks. This is the crazy part. So friends, this is this is the infinite money glitch. Okay, do you know MicroStrategy? I'll, sh I'll show you now. MicroStrategy's stock market market cap price is trading at three times the Bitcoin balance uh, balance sheet on on its books. So I'm going to show you that now. So MicroStrategy is 384 bucks. It should be like 120. Okay, that's what it should be. So I put it. So it's it's trading up here. But it should be down here based off Bitcoin's price, okay, if it was one-to-one. -one. Now, why is that an infinite money glitch? That's because, man, that's just nuts. It's telling you this is they can now borrow money again and then buy Bitcoin and the market keeps giving them an expensive price. That's nuts because now you're just limited to how much you can borrow. That's why we believe, I believe, micro strategy friends, they're going to they're gonna keep trying to do this vertical accumulation stuff Look, man, something bad's going to go wrong. We know something bad's going to go wrong. Something bad always goes wrong. Not in the bull market, though. In, in the bear market, something bad goes wrong. Look, man, it's trading at a premium. One day, friends, it might trade at a discount. Okay? It might trade at a discount. That's just that's crazy. But, hey, someone's going to have to come and firm it. Lucky for us, friends, we have Hex, the better Bitcoin, with your hourly reminder Oh man, we're all slingshot leverage on each other. We know that. We know we are. That's why I just the man, be careful of the leverage. I know you're all gonna do it. I know. I know everyone's gonna do it, friends. I, I like it's just you're going to a party. Hey, don't take drugs, everybody. Don't drink. I know everyone's. I know everyone's gonna do it. All I can do is there will be points where I'm. We're gonna have to do different tiers of risk. Where I'll just come out. I'll just have to do red thumbnails and go warning. I go warning. I don't think the bull market's over right now. Um, I'm not trying to pick the top. I'm just letting you know, please get rid of your super risky stuff right now. What's super risky? Borrowing money that's not yours. That's pay that off right now. Okay, if you got a credit card, pay it off. Uh, if you've got a mortgage for a long time, okay, man, sell something, pay yourself off for the next one or two years. Just pay that part off. Okay. Uh, oh, do you pay rent? I don't know. Cover yourself for rent for a year. Do that. Um, do you have credit card? But a lot of people, friends, are going to have, by the end, of this, they're going to have a lot of credit card loans. They're going to get 15 grand, 15 grand, 15 grand. I'm just going to tell you, just please pay that off, man. Pay that off now. Get rid of it now so you can sleep at night because I just, I don't want to be having a heart attack for you if Bitcoin is down 25%, right? And then we're praying it recovers back to the high because if Bitcoin drops another 25%, altcoins are down 80 to 90% by that point and it's pretty much game over. But yeah, you can't rely on me. Obviously, the best thing to do is abstinence, friends. Like, oh, don't do the leverage. But I know everyone's doing it, man. I know they are. I know everyone's doing it. I, I've already seen friends. I already know. Yeah, they're family friends. I, I know they're looking at it. When they start asking, you know, there's some phone calls made to the banks. Hey, how much can I borrow on this loan? Ah, man. Because you don't understand, friends. From my, look, let's play some pump music for them. And let's tweak the nipples. Simultaneous tweak. Look, I know what they're doing, friends. They're just, they just they think about it once or twice a day. They're like, hey, man, that freak Somi has been in this game for so many years. He kept saying it was going up. Friends, you know, I've been talking about 100K Bitcoin literally since 20, hey, and the end of 2018. At the end of 2018, when I got in, I'm like, this game's going 100K. And now, like, we're 91,000 US. By the way, I already hit 100,000. Thank you to the shitty Aussie dollar. <laughs> <laughs> That's my friends. The Aussie dollar is only 67 cents to the US dollar. So we get a plus 50%, whatever the US dollar price says on that. So we, we already cleared the 100K hurdle. 
a long time ago. But all that built up FOMO, man. You know what I noticed, friends? Even if I don't talk to anybody, but they can smell when you're winning. <laughs> they can see it. They they know. They I'm remembering every time there was big gold season. They know. They can see it. They just I don't know how. Everyone's checking the price all the time. It's like every day. Not interested. Not interested. Not interested. But when they see. When they see this big behemoth, okay, when we look at it right now, when they're seeing a big fat giant, they know, man, they know it's coming. And trust me, if they know it's coming, everyone else does too. Continuing on with the news, friends. So Michael Saylor, right, he actually announced on top of buying his 51,000 Bitcoin extra, he's actually raising another $1.75 billion more to buy even more Bitcoin once again. So they're just doing the glitch, man. They're borrowing money because why is it a glitch? Remember, it all comes down to the growth rate. So I made my video for Victor. It's this extremely important, friends, because uh, once you see the world like this, you start taking a long term, long term view, and it's to do with the growth rates. If you want to know on average how long does something, this is how the institutional funds think. By the way, they're not thinking about oh, is Bitcoin going to hit ninety k or ninety two thousand? They don't care about that. They're thinking about okay, if we hold for two cycles, eight years. If we hold for eight years, what's our worst growth rate that we can get. That's what they're thinking about. I manually computed this for you. These numbers are the four-year halvening to halvening growth rates, right? Halvening to halvening, each one, H to H. Um, and this one was 67%. Now I'm just guessing this one's going to be 40%. My man, that brings us at 258K by 2028. And it's possible we get there next year and then come back down or whatever. But this is, remember, if you're getting 40%, they can borrow at six. They're paying six, but they're getting 40. You're just limited to the liquidity on Bitcoin. So when does that number kind of like, when's it starting to become a problem? Well, I reckon soon. Nah, not really soon, but like, actually, yeah, soon. Soon. We, like, we might be 91K. We might be back at this price at the end of 2026. That's possible. Yeah, so we're actually in the danger part now. It's But it doesn't feel like danger. Why? Because you still have this part to continue. Like it's going to feel amazing, round it off, amazing, amazing, and then 2026 come back down. Like, oh, crap, why do we borrow all this money? We're actually going to lose. we got to get out, and then we can continue up later on. But that's why if you take a long-term view, you win. Also, that's why a lot of you are going to take a credit card loan. You shouldn't. You shouldn't, friends. Please don't do it. But uh, I know what it is. Like your credit card loan, I know, you, you, you're paying like 20%, but you're trying to make like a 5X in the next six to 12 months because everything's going to go ballistic, hopefully, meme coin super cycle. So that's why if you make the money, they have to pay it off quickly, but you, you should be careful, man. You're paying against time here. So um, all I can do is I've already told you not to do it. All I can do next is like I'll do some warnings along the way, pay off that super risk of stuff straight away the, because altcoins, friends, they can always come back. We can always make them back. Most of them can come back unless like there's extreme numbers, right? But it's the... It's the can it's the part where you might have to like sit for another six to twelve months paying off a big rate. That's the uh, that's the tough part. Hopefully we don't get there, right? Now I also wanted to show you this. Okay, so Donald Trump, friends, he's got a stock DJT. They are in advanced talks to buy crypto exchange backed. I don't know if you guys remember, I think Crypto Face, shout out to Mr. Cookie. Cookie made like uh Crypto Face, right? That's my nickname for him. He made like a million dollars short on Bitcoin. I remember this back in 2019 when we had the backed uh, the backed freaking exchange that was launching. It ended up being like just a giant scam. Uh, I forgot where it was. It was here. This was the move that went back, back down there. So it was right here, back launched. I think it just went bang, just capitulated all the way down. It made like a million dollars on the short. Everyone coming out, big, big, big liquidation. So yeah, I think it's just, just because they have an, a crypto exchange, a license, and it takes like probably years to get it. So they've already gone through it. So you can just, you buy an exchange to do that. That was like one of FTX's, like, uh, I think one of Soy Bankman Freed, one of his ways to make money. Like they buy the exchange. They just, they, he just wants to buy licenses off other exchanges and then hold them. So FTX has multiple of them. So he can just sell them off later on. I think he did some pretty smart business moves here and there. Just obviously did one fatal one. So learn, learn from Soy Bankman Freed, friends. That's what happens when you drink too much soy. Okay. Yeah. He bought into some AI fund that's worth a billion dollars now. He got into their ICO. They're an open, they're a uh, chat GBT competitor, open AI. Okay. So they made a billion dollars there. He was right about Soylana, really right. Uh, they're just right about a lot. Problem is, he was just wrong about one thing, and it was that there was a mismatch of duration of the cash. He just he borrowed too much money, and then the bear market came. So uh, learn from that, man. Learn from that. So you can get everything right. 
So he, look at that. He, ten decisions. Nine of them were correct. Actually, ten of them were technically correct. Just the last one, you were wrong on the timing. Liquidated. $20 billion gone. All right? So uh, it can happen to anyone, friends. That's why if, you, if you're in spot coins, yeah, it can be harmful liquidity-wise. However, it can always come back. It can. They have a chance to, and you don't get forced out. Paul Tudor Jones' hedge fund now owns $230 million of, of Roca Negra's Bitcoin spot ETF. Fantastic to see. If you guys remember Paul Tudor Jones, remember watching his documentary. So Paul Tudor Jones here. Friends, a lot of you guys are young. You don't remember him. He was like, he was the greatest trader, one of the greatest traders of our time ever. He's like, he's 70 years old now. So he, he actually did Elliott Waves. Um, and what he did was there was a documentary made about him leading into the 1987 stock crash. And he, he saw some Elliott Wave pattern and he used his fund. He went like turbo short and he got it right. And that was a 1987 stock crash. The stock market dropped like 30% and it was on leverage, right? So he made like infinite return and he became like, he made like billions of dollars, right? Uh, also interesting, he lost everything when he first started trading, just like everyone else. He goes onto the floor. I think he was trading commodities like wheat. Things are going up. He just gets getting short, doesn't have a stop. It just blows him out. He learns from that moment as well. So now he's in Bitcoin, right? He's been in Bitcoin for years. Um, yeah, he's one of, the, uh, one of the greatest traders of our time. But also, he's lost it. So he doesn't make anywhere near the returns that he used to. Uh, he, he, he got reinvigorated with life in crypto, you can tell. Um, yeah, because they're macro guys. That's it, friend. Just learn from this, man. The greatest trader couldn't make money for like the past 20 years. Okay, but they could make money, but like, pff, bro, you, you, used to, you used to have like 90% return years or 120%. And now the stock market does like 12 in one year, he'll do like seven. He's like underperforming stock market. Think about that. He had like, he had 10, 10x edge over the stock market or like a giant, giant, giant edge. And now you underperform it. Just like, reminds you of the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight, friends. You just, this is what happens. This is, see, in markets... Trading friends, it's not it's not just, oh, I learned something and I win. It isn't that. It is like a sport. Your bones get fragile. You lose your edge over time. What works doesn't work. It's just, it, yes, that's why to win, if you take a long-term view, all you have to do is hold because the, the, the debasing and the growth rate is working for you in your favor. In more news as well, Goldman Slugs plans to convert its digital asset platform into a blockchain venture for faster trading and settlements. Note that Chainlink link oracle is used for most of these down the line. Does that something interesting? The soy boys it will be mogged, of course, friends. How could we forget? So Goldman Slug just showing you, friends. Everyone's like, everyone's starting to use blockchain. They're actually using it for real purposes because it can settle stuff. You don't have to worry about 15,000 accounts mismatching. It does everything super fast. And you can see everything transparently. You don't have to go and balance books or anything. You can just see everyone's credit at all times. And then you can connect to DeFi. They'll give you loans on that credit instantly. Isn't that amazing? You don't need to do like all these like mismanaging and all these other inventory things. So that's why crypto is a future. Now, baby dolls, I'm checking out the Pulse Chain Core Coins. Okay, I just have to pause for a second. This is what it's doing. Look at this. Pulse, PulseX, Inc., and then Hex doing a retrace, okay, Hex. You see that? 7%, 17%, 24%, then minus 10%. Hex is doing, obviously, the retrace because Hex, man, did a big, 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 tremendous move. This is the Pulse X to Pulse ratio, man. This is tremendous, friends. I've got a post here just to tell you. If you believe, okay, if you believe that this thing one day will get back to one. So Pulse X, the DEX, okay, Pulse X, the DEX. If you think the Pulse X, to the pulse ratio will get back to one, okay? If you believe that will happen one day, I am instructing you, no, I'm instructing you. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna gently pat you on the back and in a very family friendly way tell you, if you think that can happen one day, by default, you should have a position in PDI and in EHEX, which is hex from Ethereum. You should have something in them. You decide how much. Maybe we have one dollar. Okay. Maybe you have one dollar. Maybe you have a bullet. Maybe you have ten bullets. You decide on what you want to do. I'm just letting you know. You're betting on the same thing. Okay. You're betting on some Greg the Duck intervention. You're betting on the no man left behind policy. 
Saving Private Ryan. But it's not that anymore. It's sa Saving Private P Die. <laughs> saving Private Ehex. Okay. Saving Private Baby Doll. You are betting on the same thing without you knowing. We well, do know. I'm telling you now. Okay. So if you, like I said, once again, repeating on this, it's just, you're betting on the same thing, but it hasn't happened yet. If this, I'm just telling you, if Pulse X to Pulse is up here, the prices in EHEX and PDI you see today, you'll, they'll be higher. And then they're just like one step removed now. The market's going to wake up to it. They're going to be, they're going to be much higher in price. They won't be like at the like extreme final end points, but yeah, yeah, the bulk of the move from today will be done. And I have it out here. This is the presentation fence. This is the PDI logo. This is Hex from Ethereum. So, you know, if you believe the ratio can get there, own some PDI, own some EHEX. So that's why PDI, I didn't, I didn't say, oh, it's pegging $1. No, I okay. go, if, if that ratio gets there that you're looking at, uh, PDI can be closer to 10 cents, which is like a 20X from today. And I'll show that to you now. This is the PDI. This is the USD price chart. So you don't you don't even need this chart, friend. That's why if you understand ratios, which I've been teaching you, highest value content in crypto. All right, your friend to the end. There is no end. If you just understand ratios, you just know how to click this chart. Do you understand? Do you know how to click click this chart? You do. Okay, good. You know how to click this chart. All right, look at that. This is not accidental. It's linked spiritually and financially. It's linked to Pulse going up, and as well, friends, the PDI. It, it's the spear of the memes. Crazy. That's crazy. It's the spear of the memes. It goes first. How is an unpegged stablecoin moving first? Don't ask questions. It is. You have the mystery of PDI. Oh, is it Richard moving it? Yes. Is he going to peg it? Maybe. What's he going to peg it with? Theories. You want those questions. All right. You want those questions. If some people said, this is exactly how it works. This is exactly how it's going to happen. And people believed it. Okay. The price will be up. There's no opportunity anymore. Now I've actually got some breaking news, just in news for Pulse friends. PLS Pulse has flipped green on the weekly super trend. Look at that. Look how it is up here. It's now 0.6 X day one sack. So, you know, it, what it means is just like based off the weekly chart, You've now confirmed, if it closes here, by the way, we've got to close here. We will close here. Look how small the candles are. It's pretty much it's ready. You've now confirmed you're moving up for sure. That's it. You're moving up. Now, how how much up and can you go sideways first and then go up? Yeah, you can. But um, this is pretty much it. Okay. This is it's like it's ready. It's, it's Basically, it's forming the other hump of the U. You see this part? This is like the final, final part. And it was like, oh, no, break even soy boys. They're going to get out again. And then you finally... Do something like that. Now, I'm actually having a look, friends, at the Pulse coin list. This is the, I think, seven-day return here, or 24-hour return. You can actually see these moves up here. Communist, Mog, Retracing, Actual Ethereum Retracing. Yeah, Blaster. Wow, Blaster finally stops moving. And Jupiter here as well. If you remember, friends, Blaster, I made a video about it on a year ago. If you guys remember, I think it was a B-Roots coin, but I waited for it to drop. And then it dropped. It's still sitting sideways. Let's check it out here. I mean, like, yeah, it's been a while. See, friends, these things just look dead. They just look dead, but they're not dead. They're not dead. They just look dead. Um, this, this is what comes. That's what happens in this game. So I just have to extend the boxy man. That's it. So hopefully this thing can go all the way up. This is the blaster, the pulse ratio. This is what you want. Now, remember they wanted me to, like talk about it here, but I just wanted to go down. Cheaper price, still in the zone. I think it allows you to get some, like, you know, has some like. Uh, re restaking tax fee thing. You know, it's the same game. Welcome to, welcome to crypto. Also, I've noticed Mog, friends, Mog, just Mog on Pulse, friend, did like a minus 20% move. And I'm like, oh, no, minus 20%. But you, you got to remember, man, that, that we were starting to get volatile. Look at this. It just did a free, it just did this like little move down. This, this little candle thing part. So it's forming that part of that triangle. Now, you don't know if it's going to continue up. You just don't know. But man, we're, this is what you want to see, man. Because we're so used to saying, oh, 20% down. Damn, it's over. No, we're doing the extreme volatile part where altcoins can have like, you know, plus 40% days. Oh, man, we've been waiting so long for this. By the way, I play, I play some angel music while I show you this. These are the Pulse Chain core coins, friends. 7, 13, 20% for ink, right? And you have the hex, hex moving down. But that, that's because, remember, hex, hex from Pulse Chain, it did a big move up. Okay, it started leading the move up, which I'll just show you now. And if you want to get an idea, look at the ratio, just so you can see what's moving in line and what's not. 
Look, Hexron Pulse Chain did a big move. It went up here. I don't know what it's going to do, friends. A lot of people were calling for a thousand. You never know, man. It can it can go up and double, or it maybe just sits around here and it comes around here, comes back to the moving average, and ho hovers around, and everyone figures out what to do next. Just look, man. I, I learned, friends. I learned. Just don't don't touch the ratios. Just don't touch them. Uh, the only ratio to touch are like ones that goes. They're so obviously extreme, and they're so obviously contrarian. The problem though is. They even convince people even even more not to touch them, like e hex. Okay, so e hex. If you look at the e hex to p hex ratio, it's still gone down here. It's doing this little sign of life here. It's kind of man. It, do you remember it was here? I said, look, whenever you see a chart like this, it wicks down, comes back up. They come back down, they poke under the line, and they just grind it out before it continues up. And you might even have one more thing out here. That'll be the final one. You know, it's kind of funny, friends. I've seen this chart so many times. You go back up, you come back down here. Everyone thinks you're in the clear, you are on the way up, but then there's like one more capitulation and this gets gets bought up. Now, is that going to be when BankX gets rid of them next year? I don't know, but um, I, I've seen this so many times in, in XRP, in Bitcoin, in these charts. You come back up. It, by the way, it looks like the zombie virus up here. You come back up here. You look like, oh no, bang, and it gets bought up. That might be the final one. But yeah, we're just having fun here. Remember, your, your goal is just to look for value. You don't have to touch e hex or anything out here. Just stick to the core coins, but it is a core coin. But yeah, everything's going great. Now, from earlier in the news, friends, you remember Donald Trump is meeting with Brian Boldstrong, aka Boldilocks. And does that mean more listings will come, more meme coins will happen? I don't know. Wonder what they're going to talk about. Maybe he wants Brian Boldstrong to be on one of his um, advisory things. He's like, hey, you're a crypto guy. And you know what? It makes sense because Boldilocks. He wants Coinbase, like he wants crypto to be pro-America, right? Of course, and America to be pro-crypto. So it's probably going to ask him as well, oh, we hope, like what can we do to bring everything back to America? I want America to be the home base of all these and all these other coins and stuff out here. So that will be exciting. This is me coming in to buy the crypto dip. I love this video. One more time. Yeah. Oh man, that's exact. That's that. That's the crypto bull market you wait for. But it just takes a long time to come out here. Also, shout out to Mr. J Plus and Sammy Ch Sammy Chica. Look at this. Time for a bounce. Look at this. Ben Armstrong, Bitboy, Chainlink is dead. If they aren't using Pyth, I would say stay away. Chainlink data is the wish.com of Oracle. So yeah, don't you know? Not don't take him seriously. But we have uh, when it comes to Pyth, friends. Pyth is just it's the oracle of Solana. Yeah, it's new, um, and you can touch it if you want. But what I'm saying is like, why don't touch Pyth? Why? If you're going that route, just buy meme coins, bro. Don't waste your time with another competitor oracle. Don't waste your time with that. If you're gonna buy and put something in the boring stack, you you buy Chainlink and then take a barbell of that and just go buy memes. Okay, because Pyth is like, okay, Pyth will outperform Link, maybe. But also, what if Soilana season rotates out next year? That's one issue. Uh, another issue is like, if Soilana's going to have a season, bro, why are, you buying, why are you buying an Oracle thing on it? That's something to think about. Now, friends, you know, someone in Telegram asked me as well, one of the baby dolls, um, what Soilana meme coins and stuff you want to get? Look, man, they're expensive, sirs. They're expensive, sirs and sirettes, mademoiselles. They're not... There, you can buy if you want the more ad list, but man, I'm just look, friends. I just I got to show you something, man, and I really do mean this when I say this. Be careful of rotating stuff now. That's all I'm saying. Pretty careful because what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the pulse to ETH ratio, and it's on the right hand side here. I was just moving it in the background, friends. You've got to, you got to. So if you're curious, you've got to go to the, you got to go to the WEF pulse pair, click invert. And then press the ratio button. So you got to do that. And then you have the pulse ETH ratio. Man, this is extremely important to know this. You see, friends, th see this line here? That's our price for sacrifice from July 2021. Okay, that's the pulse ETH ratio price we got. So yeah, technically, we are still down 63% after three years. All right. So if this thing, friends, look how easy it is to just go up here and make a 200% move. That's a 3x. You see, it's not even it's not even doing any gains. It's just reverting back here. So you're just getting back to Manchester. It's nothing special. It's so easy to get there. Okay, you know if you do that, 
man, you've missed out on the first three X, by the way. They missed out on the first one, like the, the quickest one. But look what Soilana has to do from here to give you a three X. If you go and do this move, by the way, you know that is basically an Ethereum flipping. So if Soul ETH is going to give you a 200% gain, a 3x from here, you literally got to flip Ethereum in market cap, pretty much. You're like within striking distance. You're like only 10 or 20% less. You're asking for a lot, man. Like you got to flip ETH at that point. And look, is it possible? Of course it's possible. I'm just saying like, and by the way, look at this, look at this. If you give up now, look, look when, look from a year ago. From a year ago, here's Soilana. Look where 200% takes it. It's only still up 135%. If you want a 200% move from a year ago, look, it's still got to be up here. So basically, what I'm saying is, if Pulse Chain, as soon as it does here, friends, as soon as it goes back up here, you've outperformed Soilana holders for the past year. Straight away. You've outperformed them. Okay, so you've gotten more ETH value than they have. And all, all Pulse Rain have to do is this tiny little distance. That's it. It doesn't, it doesn't have to do much, man. Do you, know how e, do you know how fast it is? You can just do that. Bang. There you go. And it, it's important because that's the first 3x of the move. Because if you realize you're too late up here, look what then you look what you need to make it worth your while up the top. Now you need like another a 3x up here, which is a big move. You need to break the Pulse Chain launch high to get your other 3x. However, from today, if you just hold today and you ride it up here, you get a 13x on your Ethereum. Do you see, that's why selling lows is extremely dangerous because it's got the thinnest liquidity, right? But that's by the principle of just selling low, right? It's got the thinnest liquidity and it takes the littlest amount of effort to make it snap up the first two or 3x, which you've missed out on. That's the, that's the dangerous part. Just like with Hex, for example. Like, if you're selling Hex at one cent, you know what I mean? It's Maybe you're like, oh, when it was half a cent, it's good. But yeah, it goes up. It hits 2.4 now. What if in like another few weeks, friends, it's like four cents? You're like, oh, crap. I sold at one cent. I never got back in. Now it's up at four cents. There you go. You can only buy back 25% of your position. So if you sold a million Hex at one cent, when it's back up to four cents, you can only get back 250,000. My gosh, it's like, that's why it's extremely dangerous to be selling lows. Also, look how strong the charts look. So this is the Pulse PLS chart. See the round, the W, same as well as the Pulse X price chart as well. I've just got a 15X price move up here because it sounds nice when you're looking at it. But yeah, man, like they, these things, they're, they're, they're ready, ready. But you just, you just don't know. What if they did the Soilana chart? You just don't know. But if you can just hold on for this two to three year period while you sit through this, it's worth your while. That's why I, meant to, I, don't, I don't make any promises like, oh, uh, it's going to go up 20, 30, 40 times your money. I don't have any price targets. I just know from markets, if you're, in the, if you're in the business of buying low or holding lows, on average, you get handsomely rewarded. That's what you're looking at. Um, if you're in the business of like, like, look at Miles, friends. Miles, man, Mr. Miles, he makes a post saying, if you're in Ethereum, you have sunk cost fallacy. So he's basically telling people, in Ethereum, you should be selling the bottom right now because you think you've invested so much time that you're not you're, you're blinding yourself out here. I could make one of his um his uh, posts here and just and put it on the chart. And actually, what I've done is I've now got it here. So this is just I just want to show you, friends. Just like you got to learn from this. Okay, so I'm not. It's not to pick on anybody. I'm not not not. It's not for that. I'm just I want to let you know. Market cycles occur, and at each point. When the prices are very, very high, all prices are low, people convince themselves it'll keep going no matter what. And they use every explanation in the book. Everyone. And it's, it's another form of this time is different. All right? It is another form. But also, they could be right. Some things never recover. Right? Look at XRP, BTC. Imagine XRP. Imagine you said sunk cost fallacy two years ago. They'll be saying, hey, you're telling me to sell the bottom after like six years. Yeah, but there's other opportunity costs, you see. This is it when, uh, dear ETH holders, please review the following concept, sunk cost fallacy. But look where he puts it. 
Look where he puts a fence, right at the bottoms, right here. So it's, it, it's in, in a nutshell, it's trying to tell you, oh, it's been going down for so long for a good rational reason, and you should get out now because it's going to go down lower. Um, friends, you've even seen this in EHEX. You'll see, you see this in every, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter. People, when prices are low, people will convince themselves. They'll make up stuff. They'll even think the founder and leader's psyopsing. You see? So <clears throat> relying on other people, you can't do that. You, that's why I always say, man, if you just watch the charts, if you just buy low on charts and you hold long enough because you never, you can't get the low, but on average you're looking for lows, then you outperform everybody by a long shot. And that's why, like I mentioned to you, like what if, what if, man, what if ETH BTC does this first plus like 30% move? Okay, there are people right now, what if, what if that happens? What if we do a fast 30% move? Now, remember, see, because Pulse Chain's so thin, it can do a fast 3x move, not 30%, a fast 200% move. And when that happens, all the altcoins will reprice as well. Look at Sammy's Garden, Peppy's Garden. Hilarious, friends. I love this picture. Love this picture. I made it. It's cute. The Pulse Chain ecosystem, right? You have a lot of vibrant subculture communities. They're just like plants in the garden. I, I don't have any favorites. I love them all. Okay, because uh, even the ones that maybe they aren't as fun or exciting, I still love them because they make the other stuff look fun and exciting just by existing. And you need to see the experimentation, man. Like, you don't know that buy and burn tax rerouting. You didn't know that it wasn't going to, like, be as sexy this this cycle. You have to watch my videos because I told you, okay, that was a DeFi thing back in 2021. It probably won't, but you just never know, man. Like, memes came back. And we did another dog coin. Look at dog we've had. Memes came back. Remember the unicorn? You have to watch my video. Remember, I know you watch all my videos pretty much a lot, but that's why meme coins are a real unicorn themselves. They were able to come back in following cycles with more ferocity. That's never before happened, okay? So with these altcoins, friends, my ambition is just keep watering all the plants. People invent stuff. They make stuff. They meme hard. That's pretty much what it comes down to. In the end, the whole ecosystem will win if Pulse, the spear, is rising. Where to from here? Hopefully up. Make sure you like, subscribe, but not catch the next one.